In this video, I will teach you how to use the RGB curves. I will show that to you in Premiere Pro CC 2015, but it also works pretty similar in any other editing software, also for example in Lightroom, which I might refer to later on. First of all, how do you um, access the RGB curve in Premiere Pro? You either go under Effects and then put in RGB, type in, then you make double click on RGB curves and you open it in the Effect Controls. However, I don't like this window so much. I prefer the, um, the Luminary color window, which you have since CC 2015. Some different video clips I made um, how to work with the RGB curves. First of all, how do you read them? Um, the, you see this line here? And the left bottom part of this line shows the dark areas of your picture, means the black areas, for example, um, are this area, which is in a histogram, this area. The midtones, for example, over here, are the middle area. And the highlights, for example, here, here, are, or in the histogram here, are the right top area. And everything that goes to the to this area is getting brighter and this area is darker. Let's show this. It gets brighter, it gets darker, or I make the highlights brighter. You can see how the highlights are getting brighter, too bright, obviously. Um, this one stays here. The highlights are getting brighter, or the darks are even getting darker. You can see this in this area here how the dark areas are getting even darker. Obviously, this is now very messy what I do here, but I will show you now how I think I could make this um, video footage look nicer through the RGB curves. But you can not only um, decide this for the general picture, but also for the, for the colors red, green or blue, R, G and B. First of all, I think this picture needs a bit more contrast, which, which I choose for all three colors. And adding contrast means you, means you make the highlights a bit brighter and the shadows a bit darker. But I think we want a bit more the highlights up, not too much though. And this stays like it is. But I think this picture is, has too much blue. I don't want that it is so bluish. So we go to the blues and we say all blue colors should get should become a bit darker, means less visible. Obviously, it will get very green at one point, so we have to be very sensitive with using it. And I think that's fine. Yeah, so this is how it looked be before, and this is how it looks afterwards. Here's a scene which looks very ugly right now, I think. It first of all needs some contrast. It can definitely get a bit brighter and a bit darker. And I, I think it has too much red. And I, and I think, let's have a look. Yeah, I think this has a much more sea feeling than this red. You see the, how it gets more green and blue? This is obviously too much. But just like this is definitely fine. And I think... I don't know. I think it should... I don't want to make it too bright, obviously. Yeah. That should be fine. This is how it looked before. And this is how it looks now. Look at this difference. Man, look at this difference. Our next scene is this beautiful smile we see here. Beautiful smile. But the picture is a bit dark, the video. So let's just make it brighter. Ah, now we start to see something. Obviously, um, this area is very overexposed now. We can see here that there's a big area that is overexposed, but that doesn't really matter since we mainly focus on the face and less on the background, that's fine then. Um, the darks 
can be a bit darker, not too much. Because otherwise everything gets just grey when I would leave it just as it was. But I want that the black is actually black. But I can't go too far. Obviously, if, if you see, if I go too far, this looks very ugly. So you really have to be careful on how to use it. Or, yeah, you just make small adjustments. That's how I like it. This is how it was before. This is how it looks now. Next scene. We have here some sheep, which are greatly overexposed. You might not think that they are overexposed, but I will show you that they are overexposed. So let's make the whole thing darker. Ah, now this picture starts to make sense. Yeah, it already looks much better, I think. And I think there's too much green. I mean, obviously grass is green, but I think there's even still some green in here, which I don't like. So let's make it a bit less green. Yes, already much better though. This is how it was before. And this is how it looks now. Let's now have a short look into Lightroom. We have our histogram here and we have our RGB curves here. So we have here a sample. Sorry, it's in German, but I think it doesn't matter. This is how, it, this is how the picture looked, looked before, but since I uh, recorded it with RAW, I can do a lot of adjustments afterwards. So I just made this whole picture much brighter and you see how the, you can see the tremendous difference. There is a bit overexposed, but it doesn't matter at all. If those areas are overexposed, since my sister is in focus, and that's important. And yeah, you can see I just made it brighter. So this is how it works in Lightroom, it is pretty much the same. I hope this video helped you to get a basic understanding on uh, how the RGB curves work. And have fun trying it out by your own.